you have seen men dressed as women going down the street and how they kind of over accentuate what they think is feminine, like what they think is hot, so they walk super exaggerated, like, you know, check out these things. I'm like, sure, huh? And they're really kind of coming on with it, like a caricature of a woman, like a parody of a woman, like a woman on steroids, where it's just like 10x. They're doing that, and they're like looking right at me. So they're like, Like every man in here, and you women know how simple we are. Just like what simple creatures we are, prone to the most rudimentary stimulation. After about three hours, I'm wearing a lot of makeup. <laughs> and this is the part where I, I kind of don't know where I'm going now. I am very to remember. They are men, they are men, they are men. And I, don't, I do not care what kind of sexuality that you entertain. If you are gay, fantastic. If you are straight, great. If you're bi, all the fun you have. You can just run into a party, close your eyes, stick your tongue out, just run at anything. And the first thing they go, oh, you go home with it, right? Of course you do. And so I am, I am heterosexual, card-carrying heterosexual. I knew the first time I stole a Playboy from my mother. Wait a minute. <laughs> my mother would give every year, I don't really know my, my parents very well, but my mother's mother had a husband, I guess her stepfather. I met the guy one time, very old, and I, his name was Doc. They just called him Doc. And every year, my mother would give Doc the Christmas Playboy, which apparently is a big deal. There's like naked women, but they're wearing the hat, the red Santa hat. And somehow, I, I, I put that in, in my room. I just thought, oh, a magazine, I'll take it into my room. And I'm very, very young. And I'm going through the pages, and it's, it's naked women. It's, like, it's the 60s. It's, you know, so there's, you're, it's not like some David or, or um, I'm sorry, um, uh, the, the Hustler guy. It's, it's not like, Wah! biology lesson. It's just kind of like, and you know, Kennedy's body was still cooling. And you know what I mean? It was a long time ago. And so I'm, I'm looking at this magazine going, I don't know why I like this. And I'm, fe I, 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 I'm feeling really good. This is like the best I've ever felt. And I never want this magazine to end. And, but I didn't understand why. It was better than, than pizza. It was better than a birthday cake. It was better than Christmas. It was just like page after page. Like, I, this is... This is my life. This is and my mother. You know, like, where's the Playboy? I'm like, I can't. And I'm like, it's like, oh my god, she just tears the thing. Like, well, I really, really like that. And I never forgot that. Like, I don't even know why I like it, but boy, I like it. Like, I want to make that my career, liking that magazine. And so I never had any questions about things. But after a couple of hours of of these humans looking like women, coming on to me really hard. And there's one guy, this whole thing, he had a punk motif going. He was, I think, he, I think he fancied me. <laughs> every time he would do a thing, you know, looking right at him. And I got hot. <laughs> and, 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 and the whole time, it's not like I want to go tackle the guy and go, hey, what, yeah, how about it? But you're like, what the fuck? What a simple creature I am. <laughs> and so, uh, the, finally the day finishes, and I was just very confused. And I, I, I drove, uh, and I had to go to a meeting at the radio station I work at, and I saw the wonderful people I work with, and I, I didn't tell them anything. I said, I, I, uh, I just uh, got in my car and came here from uh, somewhere else, because I... <laughs> oh, that's weird. Anyway, <laughs> so... Um, as the years go on, as you probably have guessed, I get more and more pissed off about things. And nothing, nothing makes me better except learning more. Even having an articulate president who can finish a sentence in the English language, who makes friends all over the world, even that will not staunch the flow of my anger. Staunch, not staunch. Anyway. I am mad, although I did have an emo moment when Barack Obama became the President of the United States. I had a night off. 
I was in Washington, D.C. on election day. In the afternoon, Ian Mackay and I went to the 930 Club and we saw the Bad Brains play. The Bad Brains play on election day in Washington, D.C. And, you know, and as you know, Ian and I grew up seeing that band. We probably saw within five shows of their first ever show, opening for the damn summer 1979. Ooh, did you miss a good show. Anyway, uh, we went to go see the Bad Brains, and it was pretty amazing. And so we go back to Ian's younger brother's house. Ian goes home. It's getting late. So I'm sitting there with Ian's younger brother, Alec, and his wonderful wife and Ian's father, and we're watching TV, and here comes the run up, it's, and, and, and you're seeing the score goes up as the electoral votes come in. And that kind of thing is a little over my head, I don't know how many points it takes to win, so I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm looking over at Bill McKay, who knows everything, I'm looking for his face to seem like, oh, depending on who wins or loses. And so he, he's really mellow guy, nothing gets him excited, I've never heard him raise his voice, and I've known him since I was 11 or 12. He went, oh. Barack Obama won. I was like, I didn't believe him. I went, how, how do you know? He said, well, he needs, what is it, 70? I'm sorry, I don't know. He's like, well, he needs that to win. And, or okay, well, well, he got it. Oh, he's got 10 more? Oh, wow, he's, he's really, wow, he's, he's kicking McCain's ass. I said, are you sure he's won? Because I've had elections stolen from me before. <laughs> and I'm just waiting to see numbers jump back to McCain's side. Thank you, Fox News. And he said, no, no, he won. And then the, the, they cut to some guy, you know, some talking head news guy. Barack Obama has won. And he's the president. And then it cuts to Barack Obama in Chicago, basically saying, like, thanks, everybody. And I remember forgetting to breathe. I was looking at the TV like, because I've been really wanting this to happen and believing it couldn't happen. Because, uh, as you know, America has a problem with race. Every country does. If there's racism, that's a problem. And my country has a real history of it. And so, all of a sudden, we have an African-American president who I think can, can do pretty well for America. So I stopped reading, like, why should we? And then I, I'm like, what's going on with my face? And the tears are streaming down my face. <laughs> which is kind of touching, isn't it? But being a guy, I immediately look around the room to see if any other male in the room is crying. <laughs> So I, you know, I need at least one other person. And uh, the Mackays are a stoic, Scottish lot. So Alec and Father Bill, dry. It's only me and the wife. Just <laughs> total emo. And I look around, and you're like, all right, all right. And uh, I had a show the next night, so I had to walk through my old neighborhood back to my Bon Jovi mobile, my, my rental, and drive south. So I said goodbye to everyone, and like, wow, it's a going to be a pretty interesting damn century with this starting it off. And so I, I went back through my old streets that I grew up on as a young guy, and it, it's a very political town in Washington, D.C., and everybody has a sign for either McCain or Obama on the front lawn. And, and in all the Obama sign houses, lights on here, like, wee, wee. Champagne, people screwing on the lawn. <laughs> and, and all the McCain, Palin houses, dark. 